Now all this does is read um, voltage, current, it's a loss model alarm, whatever. Because of the popularity of it I decided I was going to do uh, another version which is going to be totally overblown with absolutely everything on it. But unfortunately the limitations of the Arduino Pro Mini don't allow it. So what I've got here is I'm going to be using a Teensy 3.2 Um, it's going to have a current sensor on it, voltage and current sensor. I think this is a 90 amp, although I really don't trust that with 90 amps anyway. Temperature sensor, I'm not taking these out because I'll lose the bloody things. They're actually high precision temperature sensors because it says, look, there's going to be a, a tactile what's it switch, this is a fire position and there's a push button so you can browse through menus I've got a real time clock I've got a 5.8 receiver which has actually got um, if you can see it what's actually on there so it's got all those um, those connectors on there. Now what I'm going to do is do a 5.8 scanner. So as you can see who's on what channel. If it will work that way, I don't know if it will yet. And I've also got this. Now Mr Chinaman sent me an email, said I'm doing these displays, do you want a couple? So obviously I said yes. I couldn't really tell him to piss off. So these are 1.8 inch AMOLED um, displays which is active matrix organic light emitting diode displays which are commonly used on the um, something like the Samsung Galaxy range uh, which is organic basically so there's no actual, there's no backlight to them now, I don't know what the resolution of this thing is yet. I think it's 128 by 128 or something like that. So, oh, and also it's full colour. Um, 65k, I think it is, something like that. So, I'm going to use that as well. So, I've got all these. And I've also got my old trusty breadboard, which I'm going to lay out. Now, one of the reasons why I always buy two of everything is because... First of all I can use my breadboard to lay everything out and then I can get it all in front of me and I can build it with this still in, intact and working and obviously when you lay it out on a breadboard it's going to be a lot easier to transport and just chuck in the cupboard or whatever. So I'm going to try I'm going to start building this. Now hopefully Everything will go perfectly, but I know damn well it won't. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but these OLEDs that I've got, um, they are terrible, absolutely terrible. Uh, this bottom one here, there, or it might be the top one, don't know. Um, on the outsides, you can see, or you might be able to see, it just starts fading all around the outside, it was terrible, it really was and this one's been modified so all I've done is change one of the resistors to actually boost the brightness which is a hell of a lot more bright or a hell of a lot brighter so I'm going to do the same with that one so I can use that but yeah it's um, by default Mr China man they're absolutely crap Got a teensy here. Now it's got to be a teensy because of the processing power it needs. Um, I've tried an Arduino Pro Mini and they're too bloody slow. So anyway, there's a real time clock there. There's a temperature sensor there. There's a receiver, a 5.8 gig receiver there. There's a tactile switch there which isn't used, don't need it. And this is a 1.8 inch um, OLED. So, if I turn lights off, 
so as it doesn't flicker, I'll turn that one off as well. So we've got the time, we've got the date, we've got the temperature, it's bloody hot in here. Uh, the channel is totally meaningless at the minute. RSSI, obviously. The frequency, that's the frequency it's actually scanning at. And it tells you what band it's on. Now you see there's a couple of blips here already. Uh, these are actually wireless N wireless, which works on 5.8 gig. Because I know my uh, my wireless actually runs on 5.8, so it, you know it's good for that as well. It tells you what to, uh, yeah, if there's any wireless ends in the district, whatever. Anyway, so if I get my quad and I plug it in. Now basically what it does, I'm going to have to unplug that in a sec, but you can see there's this big wide band here and there's also a big blip there, so... What happens is, uh, when it receives a signal, it boosts it, it multiplies it, so as you can um, basically see what, what frequency it's on if it's a, a, a distance away. Um, now the other thing is it's got a very wide band at the minute, uh, so I've got to narrow that down just so as you can uh, freeze it on uh, whatever channel you want to freeze it on but it's quite good because it'll um, it obviously these are all the 32 channels that you can get and it will give you a graph of exactly what channels are uh, being used so you'll be able to um, select your channel now if there's anything else that anybody anybody can think about putting on there um, I've still got to put a current sensor and voltage sensor on there uh, there's going to be a lost model alarm as well I think, I don't know and I reckon I can fit it into this box here nice little project box the LCD or the, the OLED actually fits perfectly in there I don't know what current draw um, it is at the minute. I think we're running on about 80 milliamps, which isn't a lot. But if I knock the duty cycle down, then um, you know the battery, whatever I can fit in there, will be a lot better. But if if you think there's anything else I can add to it, let me know below. Oh, and I'm using these. Um, Quality. I mean, look at the quality of that. <laughs> Simon, I know you're going to be watching this. I really can't fault your quality, mate. I really, really can't. And these things bend as well. And they're quite cheap. Yeah. So there you go. That's the progress on it so far. But, um, yeah, we'll see see where we go from here like I say if you want me to put anything on there drop a comment below and I'll see what I can do